Kundalini Yoga um, was first taught in this country in 1968 when Yogi Bhajan came here. Before that, no one had ever heard of Kundalini Yoga. And as he continued teaching us, he began to describe its roots, where it came from. And he, in fact, told us that it came from Tibet, from Asia, from South America, that there were cultures all over the world that practiced the sacred technology. So it's very ancient. And in India, there were Sikhs around the time of Guru Nanak, who practiced what were called um, Udasi Sikhs and Siddhi Sikhs. They, not Sikhs, but cities that practice these um, very secret and more stringent practices where they were celibate and they lived alone. But what Yogi Bhajan taught when he came here in 1968 was the householder yoga. So that's what we refer to today as Kundalini Yoga. It is a householder yoga and it was meant to work very fast. So it combines in Kriyas three aspects, postures and movement with breath, combined with sound current meditation. You combine these three together and that uh, causes it to work very fast to help you heal yourself, to heal yourself on physical and subtle energy levels so that as ordinary people, we can live in the world and still experience the ecstasy and the uh, healthy benefits of kundalini yoga with a consciousness to serve. And that's what Yogi Bhajan always stressed was the most important thing that we wanted to achieve in kundalini yoga, not that we would go away and be uh, celibate and uh, live in a cave, but to live in the world and share this technology to help everyone heal. At the same time, we don't coerce, we don't proselytize, we offer the technology, we offer the teachings, and it's a gift. And for those who have the destiny to receive it, they can learn and also heal themselves and grow. So that's very briefly. Uh, kundalini yoga there's volumes and volumes of books written from lectures that yogi bachan gave and also ancient historical texts although we talked about you can be a sikh and it's a complete lifestyle and it doesn't need yoga even in yoga that said that when you meditate on the nam and meditate on your breath that you achieve complete enlightenment. I remember in one of the early classes, the Sir Singh Sab taught, he said, if you sit down and you just start chanting, inhale, sat, exhale, nam, silently in your mind. And if you can just control your breath for eight hours, you'll be fully enlightened. You don't have to do the yoga. You don't have to do any pretzel poses. You don't have to stand with one foot up. You don't have to do anything. Just control your breath. So really, there's exactly the same teaching in both of these lifestyles. But according to what Yogi Bhajan taught, you can be a kundalini yogi and be very happy and very successful and have a very complete life. And you don't have to be Sikh or Christian or Muslim or Hindu. You can be atheist. That's the beauty of Kundalini Yoga. You can be anything and it just helps you be your best, whatever you choose. And the same, you can be Sikh and you don't have to be a yogi. You can be in very complete life and be very happy and very healthy, serving everyone. So although there is intersection, and some people like both, there may be confusion that you have to be both. No. So I would think that would be um, a, a point that I wanted to make sure that I share. It's all about 
just choosing consciously, immersing yourself in the experience and then choosing 